In the 2005 film Sideways, a one minute and three second description of the Pinot Noir grape, its temperament, and the wine itself just in Pinot Noir from obscurity to the rising star with the U.S. consumer and subsequently in the wine world virtually overnight. In this video, we'll see that Pinot Noir has been a global star for centuries prior to us Americans finding about, out about it in 2005. We're going to learn five things about Pinot Noir, a bit of its history, where it's from, the basics of Pinot Noir, its taste profile, and some suggested pairings with Pinot, plus a little bonus at the end. You know, now please indulge me for a moment. Pinot Noir holds a special place in my life. On the final exam of my sommelier accreditation, I had to blind taste a glass of wine, describe the various aromas and flavors, and identify the country and region it was from. <laughs> you guessed it, that glass of wine was a Pinot Noir. Even with a cold and congestion, I was able to adequately discuss it and determine it was from France's Middle Loire Valley region. Boom! <laughs> I was so excited. Here you're going to learn about the peculiarities of Pinot Noir and a little bonus at the end of the video. Keep in mind if at any time you like what you hear, click like or subscribe or hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Pinot Noir, a bit of history. This is a very ancient grape. The origins is unclear, possibly native to Burgundy. As best we can tell, it's one of the oldest grapes in the world. It's over a thousand years older than Cabernet Sauvignon. Pinot means pine. Noir means black. The grape cluster looks like a black pine cone because the grape bunch is so tight. Pinot Noir can be prone to mutation thanks to its popularity and long history. There are more than 50 official recognized Pinots in France, compared to only 25 of the much more widely planted Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a tough grape to grow and is equally difficult to make a good wine from this grape. Because it's so fickle and unpredictable, it's sometimes called the heartbreak grape, the gypsy grape, or the prima donna of grapes. Pinot has become the world's most popular light-bodied red wine, but don't plan to sell your Pinots too long. Generally, 10 to 15 years is all you can expect. Where it grows. We see approximately 70% of Pinot's global production comes from five countries, France, the US, Germany, Moldova, and Italy. In Alsace, France, it's the only permitted black grape, that is for quality wine. In Burgundy, if it's a red wine, it's Pinot Noir. In Champagne, there are three grapes permitted to make Champagne. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. The global fascination for Pinot Noir has encouraged experimentation and increased plantings in several other European countries. There are regions of the United States which offer climatic conditions similar to those of eastern France. In Oregon, it's the most planted grape varietal, particularly in the Willamette Valley. The cooler regions of California's north and central coast are making some very nice Pinot Noirs. On the bottle labels, you want to look for Russian River Valley, Caneros, Anderson Valley, and the Santa Lucia Highlands and Santa Barbara are positively influenced by the Pacific Ocean. Germany is the number three producer in the world. Pinot Noir is known as Splaut Burgunder and is Germany's most important black grape. It's increasingly significant in Austria and Switzerland. Northern Italy and Spain also make use of the variety for both sparkling and still wines. In Chile, experimental plantings have been extremely successful. This grape's versatility in the glass has driven its global expansion in the vineyard. Keep in mind, if at any time you like what you hear, click like or subscribe or hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Number three, the basics of Pinot Noir. As an early ripener and only needing a short growing season, this makes it a perfect candidate for cooler climates. It's one of the thinnest skin grapes, typically lightly pigmented. In the glass, 
On the color spectrum, it's one of the lightest red varietals, usually appearing as a medium to pale ruby. Because the American consumer likes darker colored wines, several producers of some very popular Pinot Noirs are fermenting the Pinot juice with Syroscrins to infuse the Pinot with darker color. Said another way, mutations, new clones, and modern color extraction techniques have led to a general darkening of many Pinot Noirs. On the nose, Pinots can be very expressive. They can be subtle, even modest on the palate. Tannins are low to medium, acidity is medium to high, with a body that is typically medium. Uh, this is the world's most popular light-bodied red wine and is a very versatile red wine due to its high acidity and lower tannins. Now, how are you doing there? Is this information making sense? If it is, write Pinot in the comments below. Number four, taste profile. I read one critic who said, Pinot Noir is sex in a glass. <laughs> really? Really? Well, I suppose so if you had enough to drink. Anyhow, it's a very light, delicate red grape, but can be packed with wonderful aromas and flavors. On the nose, it can be a very expressive. Higher quality and uh, some Pinots with some age, you'll find to be medium to highly expressive, while young or recently bottled will stay shy or less expressive. As we will see on the chart, on the palate, it leads to red fruits and continues with other flavors. In warmer climates or older vintages, these aromas are augmented by plum and bing cherry. There are earthy notes. With age comes barnyard. Sometimes the French will describe this as mier de lapin, translated rabbit poop. <laughs> no, that was actually French with a little bit of a Spanish accent. Uh, you'll pick up on floral flavors, herbal undertones, and spices. When aged in oak, you'll experience cedar, charred wood, smoke, and vanilla notes. When made well, it's accentuated by a long, smooth, soft tannin finish. The current fattishness of Pinot combined with the new expression of the variety and coming from new growing regions has complicated the traditional taste profile. Generally, New World, you found bold taste. Old World, more subtle or tantalizing. But this is all changing. And number five is food pairings. Pinots are very versatile with broad food pairing possibilities due to the higher acidity and lower tannins. You know, try it with chicken, lamb, pork, grilled salmon, mushrooms, uh, roasted meats, uh, and Japanese dishes such as sushi rolls. Remember, your sauces are the key, like fruit flavored sauces, stews, a uh, coca bean, which is chicken and red wine sauce, uh, or something a little bit gamier like duck or venison or even elk. Personally, while I enjoy its versatility, my favorite is wild-caught sockeyed salmon grilled on a cedar plank with all the accoutrements. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about Pinot Noir. Well, almost. Hang in there for a quick bonus at the end. But first, let me thank you for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If it was, make sure you subscribe, click like, and ring the little bell to turn on notifications. I'll let me know if you have comments below. Also, if there's someone you know that's interested in wine, make sure you share this video with them. I'd really appreciate that. You ready for the ad added bonus? If you want to check out the best Pinots in the world under $40 or the best Pinots in the world under $15, click their respective links in the description below. Now, don't forget to enter your discount code ASTYWINES at checkout. Again, that discount code is ASTYWINES. Folks, thanks for being with me. I'm here to help and serve you as we learn more about wine together. I look forward to you joining me on social media and on my website. All those links are in the description below. 
until next time. Cheers.